Good morning, everybody. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. I wish you all a happy Easter and welcome you to Elmville Presbyterian for worship this morning. Please be seated, friends. And just a, a moment of thanks for everybody who showed up uh, to the sunrise service this morning. It was indeed a joyful service. So thank you for all those that came. Uh, I see at the back there my good friend uh, Brett Stitt, and I see Casey, and I see his mum. Welcome, guys. Nice to see you. Let us join together, friends, in a moment of quiet reflection as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Spirit of power and new possibility. Open our minds to understanding. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to loving. And open our wills to carrying out the mission of the risen Christ, who is God's living word in our world. Amen. Good morning, everyone. On this blessed Easter day, hallelujah. hallelujah. The announcements are short and sweet today because we've been so busy the past month, it's time we kind of calmed down a little bit. So, anyways, there was one thing that wasn't in the bulletin, but I'll bring you up to speed on that. Um, Coming up this week, we have craft group um, at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. So we've got some little tidying up of some Christmas things, so uh, we have to go get some supplies, and we'll hopefully work away at that. Do Christmas in April, so. Choir practice Thursday at 7. And next Saturday, I think Mary's going to tell you about this in a minute, um, We've got something planned for the 13th. Were you going to say something, Mary? Saturday. Saturday. Yep, she's going <laughs> to... You know what it is. It's the games thing. She's, she's going to come up and pop up anyway, so she might as well tell you about that when she's up here. On the 27th, which is Maple Syrup Day here in, in Elmville, uh, we will be hosting a chili lunch so I know there's some sign up sheets downstairs uh, but before we get to that on April the 9th which is just a week and a couple days away we are hosting Barry Presbytery here so we'll be putting on a meal at 6 o'clock so I've got a little list here a sign up sheet which I will put downstairs we're using doing our usual menu which is always involves pie so um, Presbytery loves pie so we will give them first course, but we'll also give them pie for dessert. So I will have that downstairs for you to sign up on. And for anyone who is uh, new to the congregation, if, um, if you're at all involved in technical things, such as auto depositing and that sort of thing, um, we do have the whereabouts now to have you donate uh, by e-transfers. So there's a little note in the bulletin, and uh, if, you're, if you'd like to use that method of donating to the church, you're quite welcome to do so, but please don't change anything that you're comfortable with doing at the moment. So if you're doing the paper thing, carry on doing the paper thing. Okay, Mary. Good morning. A bit of confusion, um, why I looked kind of silly, is because the games night is April the 13th, so it is in a couple Game, of weeks. Games evening. Game, games day. After day. Sorry. After, afternoon. Whatever it is, it's on the April the 13th. <laughs> we will be playing games, so if you have a favorite game, bring it, mark it very carefully so that we'll be, you'll be sure to take it home with you. But anyway, it starts at 2 and it goes till whenever, and snacks and drinks will be provided. So that's the, hopefully, the clear up of the confusion. 
But I received an email from Victoria Evans, who is the community giving officer from GBGH in Midland, and it reads in part, on behalf of the team at Georgian Bay General Hospital Foundation, I want to thank you for hosting a partnership event in support of GBGH this past year. We are beyond grateful for the time and effort that went into making the Strawberry Supper and Canada Day Barbecue a success and your dedication to strengthening health care in our community. You will remember that from those two events we raised $5,000 and it was matched to make a $10,000 contribution. Your support of the Foundation's MRI campaign has helped us surpass the $2.1 million of the $4. million goal. This has propelled the project forward, allowing the hospital to proceed with construction in 2024 with the first patient to be scanned in early 2025. Having an MRI unit in our community will not only help reduce wait times for local patients, but will help reduce times in Barrie, Aurelia, and across the region. Well done, folks. Good morning. A responsive call to worship. O day of resurrection, we lift our hearts with joy. O day of resurrection, we will with hope. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Let us join together as God's people, the people of Elmville Presbyterian. God of resurrecting power, you lift our hearts with joy when we see the tomb is empty. 
God of resurrecting hope, you fill us with excitement when we hear that Christ is risen. God of resurrecting love, you embrace us with courage when we trust in the power of new life that you promise in the risen Christ. We offer you all glory, honor, and praise with hearts overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. And we will say together the prayer of a confession. God of resurrecting joy, we confess it's not easy to sustain Easter hope. We let discouragement, fear, and frustration to settle in, and we let anger and anxiety turn our hearts away from you. Resentment and disappointment cling to us, and we forget your great mercy of love. Forgive us, restore within us the joy and hope you promise us in Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And the assurance of our forgiveness, the assurance of our pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free for a new life by God's resurrecting grace.
Good morning. We are going to present you a, just a cute little skit and you have to go back to where the tomb is and we are going to be listening to some flowers talk about what happened at the tomb. It's Sunday morning in Jerusalem Garden. The year is 32 AD. The sun has risen and all is quiet. But if you listen very carefully, you might be able to hear a conversation between three flowers on the path. I don't feel like blooming. Why? What's the matter? Everything just seems wrong since Jesus died. I mean, he was there since the creation of the world. Maybe she just wilt and give up. I know what you mean. Why did those guys kill him? I mean, he heals people. He fed people. He showed us what God was. It doesn't make sense. You remember that earthquake when he died? You bet I do. My roots were rocking. I even lost a few petals. And when those Roman soldiers moved that rock, boulder, they missed me by inches. I was this close to, from being poor, 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 pre who? Never mind. Whoa, it's happening again. Look, the boulder's moving. Hit the dirt. Jesus' tone is open. Fortunately, it moved in the other direction this time. Listen, I hear people coming. Mom's the word. I'm not a mom, I'm a daisy! <laughs> These friends came to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body with special spices and perfumes but they didn't know what had happened in the garden. These spices should have been placed with Jesus' body as soon as he was put there. That's the Jewish tradition. But there wasn't enough time. The sun had already set, so it was the Sabbath. And you can't anoint the dead on the Sabbath. That's the Jewish tradition. The best thing we can do is anoint the body of Jesus. Now the problem is going to be that big stone Pilate put in front of the door. How are we going to move such a big stone? Stone? What stone? Look, it's been rolled away. Jesus is gone! Where have you taken him? Oh no, this is terrible. Somebody stole the body of our Lord. Why are you looking? a living person in a place of the dead. He has risen from the dead. Remember, he told you that he would be crucified by a sinful man, then buried, and on the third day he would rise again. Yes, he did say that. How did you know? Go and tell Peter and John and the others, your Lord lives. <laughs> Jesus is risen. We should hurry and tell the others. Rush off. Bud. Woohoo, yippee! 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 Jesus died and rose, and, ro and rose again. I don't get it. How could that happen? By God's power, of course. Don't you remember it was like to be a ball when we were buried inside the earth, cold and dark? You bet I do. And then the warm... Sunlight blazed down on us when we pushed the earth crew. Oh, wait, I get it. Jesus was buried just like we were. He was stronger than death, and he won, and that's the blooming truth. Oh. 
fire. And because he lives, you can live. Today we celebrate the death and the death that the gift of life Jesus offers through his resurrection from the dead. Please stand and join us in singing, He Lives. for us this morning. I wonder if we could just give a round of applause to the tremendous cast that presented the skit this morning. Well done. I think these two Geffen girls are destined for Hollywood, Craig and Val, so I, I think you need to watch out there, you know. I wonder if I could just give a small presentation. This fella came by to see me, the Easter Bunny. And the Easter Bunny basically delivers goodies to folks that are good. So I wonder if I could just ask the cast to come up and just maybe select one of these goodies from this box here. There's some chocolate things here. I don't know if chocolate's allowed or not, but it's here for anybody that would like it. Thank you. That's great. And if any of the Kobe guys would like some chocolate as well, you guys come up, you can get it. And I see Ali back there too, so if you want to come up too, there's some chocolate for you guys. Thank you. Yes. You want the, you want, okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Oops. Our reading, scripture readings this morning. The first one is responsive, is first Peter verses one or chapter one verses three. Praise to be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his grace and mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And John chapters 3, verse 16. For people so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son, that whatever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And our gospel reading this morning is John 20, verses 1 to 18. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Madeline, Madeline came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran, went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Women, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, the, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanun, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to Miss Linda for the reading and for the narration as well. That was a wonderful skit and well done to everybody. And please, young people, eat that chocolate because I'm not supposed to eat it and I'll eat it if it's still there. So please take the chocolate. Let us pray. Gracious God, open the eyes of our hearts and let us see Jesus, the risen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus who brings us hope and in whom our faith and our trust is founded. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts here this morning, O Lord, be acceptable in your sight. And we say together, Amen. Well, Easter is the most joyful day in the whole of our Christian year. This is the day when the story of the resurrection is told, the story of the empty tomb and the appearance of the risen Christ. This is the day when Christians proclaim that death is not the end. That all the powers that confront God in hostility, human self-centeredness, the self-preservation and evasions of sin and death itself are overcome through the loving, creative power of our God breaking into each one of our lives. It is the day of our deepest and most profoundest hope. And this is a hope for the individual, for each one of us, and a hope also for all of creation before and beyond death itself. The gospel scripture speaks of those astonishing records of the first bewildering experience of the two disciples, Peter and the disciple John whom Jesus loved. And it also tells us about one or more women who were there and experienced 
the risen Christ in the empty tomb. The tomb where there is a meeting with one or more angel. Now, the gospel speaks of this gut-wrenching, this life-changing, this terrifying, this confusing encounter with Jesus who has risen from the dead. It must have been so difficult for them to to comprehend, to understand, understand, to embrace, and to accept this phenomenon. The gospel then speaks of the sharing of this barely credible news with the other disciples and with the whole of the world. But this, my friends, is a message of hope that comes from this first astonishing Easter Sunday morning. Christ is alive. The suffering and death of God's Son has confronted all that is hostile in the world. The world's hostility was confronted through the unconditional love of our God. Through this love and this sacrifice, Jesus overcame the grave. The love of God continues forever onwards for all of this fragile, our fickle world. And it offers hope of a new creation for each and every one of us. Now, all four Gospels recount the discovery of the empty tomb. At the sunrise service, we spoke of Mark's account. This morning, we are looking at the account of the Apostle John. Now, all of the accounts, they differ in certain details. But John's account is the one that I really love. And I love John's account because of its particular focus on Mary Magdalene. Now, we must remember in the times of Jesus Christ, women were not treated fairly. They were not treated the same. They were not given the respect and the honor that they deserved. The Roman society placed women five steps behind a man. The society at the time did not value women. It was a man's world in a man's way and in a man's time and with a man's opinion ruled supreme. Except for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who knew the value of women. He shared with women. He included women. He he, he raised women up and he honored them. The focus on Mary Magdalene is especially is especially strong for this. There is not a lot known about Mary Magdalene. There are many stories about her, but all that we truly know is that she was a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. She followed him from the early ministry. She followed him to Golgotha. She stood and she witnessed the crucifixion of Christ. And here she is in the empty tomb, the first person in the whole world that Jesus appears to is Mary Magdalene. But Easter Day is a day where the mood is one of great joy. This is the day in which our hope in the faithfulness and love of God for all creation is grounded. The empty tomb that is hewn out of the rock, this becomes the bedrock of our Christian life and our Christian faith. This tomb is, it becomes the very hope of our faith and our life. I've spoken to many folks within the congregation, and there are some folks who've asked me that they, they, they feel sad when they think of the cross. And they ask, how could a loving father possibly sacrifice his son for such a terrible death on a cross? Why did Jesus die? What does it mean that he rose again? What are the implications for our own dying? What does resurrection imply for life beyond death? for life before death. 
Well, you see, the Holy Scripture answers each one of these questions. And the Holy Scripture answers the questions in the following ways. The Scripture that we read this morning from John gives us witness statements. We all know a witness statement. We see these shows on the TV, these crime shows, where the witness stands up and testifies to swear the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And a jury of 12 people stand up and say, you're guilty or you're not guilty. But the Scripture gives us witness statements. The Bible speaks of the witnesses of the resurrection. And it is a testimony of these witnesses that speaks to us of this resurrection in our life and in our world. Each one of us can take a great comfort and a great hope through this Holy Scripture that has lasted through the test of time, that has sustained the saints that have come before, that has encouraged so many others that have come before us. The Scripture also tells us and teaches us, it says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Now, we live in a world today where fear is commonplace. We see fear in almost everything that we come across. We see fear as it affects our personal lives, our church, our society. But the Scripture speaks with the assurance from angels and, and of the risen Christ that we should not be afraid. You see, faith replaces fear. Faith cannot exist where fear is present. And when fear exists, faith cannot flourish. This is, sorry, excuse me, but there is still so much more that we can learn through Jesus Christ. Because not only are we told not to be afraid, but we are also promised the gift of eternal life. And this is the reassurance of our faith that truly death has lost its sting and that yet there is still so much more to come in God's kingdom in heaven. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57, and I've used the King James Version of this scripture, the scripture from my youth, and Paul writes, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the scripture tells us that even in death, we are not to be afraid. Now in the scripture, Mary Magdalene, who we spoke of early, she wept. We see Mary weeping. The sorrows of life, including death and bereavement, are difficult for us to navigate through. I've said this before. The greater the love is, the greater the grief. We miss our loved ones oh so dearly. The separation from them breaks our hearts. But you see, we can all take comfort today. The power of the cross is the gift of eternal life. Now, our loved ones may not be present with us right now, but you see, they're never forgotten. And our faith promises that we will all be reunited in God's time, in God's way, and in God's place. You see, the power of the cross always gives us hope. Mary's weeping shows to each one of us our fragility. It shows our vulnerability. It shows our humanity. And Mary's tears help each one of us to find over time a sense of acceptance to that of loss. A time where we celebrate the passing of a loved one through our memories and the times that they made us smile and laugh and cry. And we hold them dear and near in our hearts. And we think of them in that place where there is no more pain, no more tears, a place of only light and love. 
that John describes later in the book of Revelations in verse 21. But Mary's weeping and the presence of the faithful love of God and the promise of the resurrection help us to bear the grief. And it also helps us to celebrate and value the gift of human life every second, each moment that we live together with each other. You see, life is precious, even just a second. The scripture also speaks to us of the wounded healer. The wounded healer. The resurrection of the crucified one who suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, who died, who was buried and descended into hell and he returned to the right hand of the Father. These wounds these horrible physical wounds of the hands and the feet and the side remain. But yet, through the Scripture, they are transfigured in Jesus' resurrection. You see, my friends, Jesus' resurrection shows to us the power and the possibility of healing and renewal in our lives. Jesus heals and restores us. And we can take great encouragement from this, that we can come back from difficult situations, that we can be renewed, that we can be built up, and that we can continue to live our lives with hope and joy as we reach out to others through our faith and in our actions of love and care, which show the presence of God's grace amongst each one of us. Every morning from now on since this Easter day becomes Easter morning from now on. Not just for Easter, but for the whole year and for all our Christian life and living. The resurrection of Jesus fills our hearts with hope and with encouragement. Easter is a day for great joy and for great thankfulness for what God has done for each one of us. Mary, Salome, Mary, Peter, and John highlight for us our humanness. They highlight our doubts. They highlight our fears. And they also show of our love for those who are close to us. They demonstrate to us faithfulness. They show us trust and faith and hope. Their witness offers each one of us a reassurance and gives us a sense of comfort through our faith. You see, Jesus teaches us how to live each day, every second, every moment through the good times and the bad times, with joy on earth. And also, how to live with hope for the moments that are yet to come. But always, my friends, always, our eyes are fixed upon that cross. That cross that cost so much. That cross that brings us eternal hope and joy. This Easter, my friends, may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and your families this Easter, now and forevermore. Amen.
before Linda prays, if you could also hold Pauline Hunter's granddaughter, Claire, in your hearts. Um, I understand that she was involved in a car accident. Apparently she is okay, um, but, but she was involved in an accident. So if you see Pauline Hunter from Knox, please reach out to her and let's just hold her in our prayers today. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. We must also just pray uh, for Mr. Clare as well. Um, Mr. Clare, uh, I understand, is, is still in the hospital. And we just want to pray for Mr. Clare at this time as well. Uh, he's an elder and a dear friend, and we hold him dear. So if we can pray for Mr. Clare as well. Thank you. Our prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, break into your church with resurrection resurrecting power. Refresh and renew each one of us through the power and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Fill our hearts with gratitude and love and let us truly be the people of Jesus. Renew our faith and strength, our trust and hope that remembers the empty tomb. Resurrect, renew, revive your people, O God. Hear our prayer. God of new possibilities, break into our relationships with resurrecting power. Where they are vibrant and life-giving, nurture and sustain them. Where there are memories of hurt or current misunderstanding, refresh them with forgiveness and reconciliation. Where there are neglect or taken for granted, open our eyes to the great gift of love that we may offer to each other. Resurrect, renew, revive your people, O God. Hear our prayer. God of life, break into situations of illness, pain, grief, and loss, with resurrecting power, where there is sickness of body, mind, and spirit, bringing healing and hope, where people mourn the loss of someone dear or their dreams of, of a better tomorrow, bring comfort and courage to go on. Bless and draw together our families in love. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people, O God. Hear our prayer. God of Easter Day, break into our moments of celebration and joy. Give us gratitude and confidence to share a spirit of grace and understanding towards others. Resurrect, renew, and revive our spirits. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for the prayers, Linda. Um, next week, uh, Pastor Jeff Walther will be here uh, to preach and to lead the worship next week. Um, I will be up in Penetanguishing. Uh, we have a new, possible new minister preaching for the call up there. And uh, as the intro moderator, I have to go up there just to facilitate the count and the call. So next week, folks, Jeff Walther will be here and Miss Angela will be over at Knox. So just to let you know what's going on. The invitation to the offering today. On Easter Day, we celebrate God's most precious gifts to us in Christ's dying and his rising. This morning, we present our gifts to God. May our generosity reflect God's goodness and the hope we have in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord.
You gave us, O oh Lord, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world, who changes the world. Now, O oh Lord, take these gifts that you have given us, and may they be applied to change the world, to help others, to lead others in hope. Amen. We invite everybody to come downstairs to enjoy some wonderful goodies. There was a selection of muffins and hot cross buns and various things. So please, we invite everyone to come downstairs and enjoy this feast. Um, it was also lovely today uh, to hear Brett's daughters, Courtney's son, Casey, crying. I haven't heard tears and crying in the sanctuary for a wee while, and it was just lovely to hear the voice of a crying baby. A crying baby is indeed the voice of our God calling us on this Easter Sunday. So go on out this week with wonder at the empty tomb to amaze you. Go with the joy that Mary felt in the garden to lift up your hearts. And with the disciples' hope of the news that Jesus had risen to encourage you. And may God's resurrecting love open the future for you empowered by the Spirit and embraced by Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.